Hey everyone, I'm Robert Hall, an avid user of Godox Lighting Equipment, and in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how to use the Sekonic L858 DU light meter with its new Godox module to trigger and control the Godox X series of lighting. This video is not a guide on how to use a light meter or metering principles or setting up ratios of light, nothing like that. It's simply a guide for people who are already familiar with light meters, but how to use the new functionality of the Godox module to work with Godox lighting. Now, if you're purchasing an L858DU light meter with the Godox module already installed, then you're going to be able to open it up and get right to triggering and controlling the X series of lighting. But say you already had the L858DU light meter and you're adding the Godox module, then you're going to have to update your firmware before you can proceed with this. If you need information on updating your firmware, you can visit the links in the description below. You'll know that the firmware was properly installed on the L850DU light meter if when you turn it on, you see the Godox branding in addition to the Sekonic branding in that little splash screen. Now, as we go through this video, I'm going to be demonstrating with the Godox 8300 Pro, but it's worth pointing out that this works with any of the Godox X series lights, as well as any of their rebrands, such as the Flashpoint R2 series in the United States. The very first thing that we need to do is switch our metering mode to the wireless option, and we do so by hitting the symbol in the top left corner, the flash symbol, and we instead go down to this flash symbol with the wireless symbol next to it. And if you guys need to see that again, it's the second from the bottom, and we're gonna use that group for triggering either a single or multiple flashes in standard sync. We'll get to high speed sync in a moment. From there, we need to make sure that we have the proper channel, group, and ID set up to work with our Godox lighting. So here in the bottom right corner, we hit the wrench icon and we go down to page two, and then we tap the radio channel slash group, and we're gonna select channel five, and we're gonna select group A. I'm gonna hit okay. Now the Sekonic light meter is ready to send a fire signal to a Godox strobe that is in channel five and group A. And before continuing, I do wanna note that there is also the wireless ID function. Now, I don't personally use this unless I happen to be working in an area where I know there are other Godox users. But if you go down to the second page in that wrench menu again, you can go to the wireless ID and we can either have it off or we can choose any of the two digit numbers to set up with the wireless ID of our Godox lighting if you're using it. So now my Godox 8300 Pro strobe is on and it is in channel five. Group A, so now we can plug in our other parameters to meter this light. In this instance, I have the meter set to 1 to 50th of a second and ISO 100. Very common settings that I shoot with in studio. And now I'm ready to meter my light source. So now we've obviously got this light in very close proximity and I got a light meter reading of F32 and 1 10th of a stop. So now let's say I don't want an F32, I wanna drop down to an F8. I'm going to hop over here on the top left corner. We see this gear symbol with an F in it. If I tap that and then tap my group A, which is the group that my 8300 Pro is in, I can drop the power of the light down here. Now I can control it with 10 stop increments by just tapping the plus and minus button, or I can drop in full stop increments by holding the button. So now I've just dropped from full power down to 132nd power, which should give me much closer to F8. Now there is some additional functionality here that works really well when you start to get into using multiple lights in a studio. As you can see, we've got all five groups here. We've got A, B, C, D, and E. So we can just go around and start metering multiple lights for a multi-light setup. And each one we can control independently or at any point we can hit the all button down here. And when we meter, it's going to send the fire signal to all five groups. One last thing, there is also modeling lamp control from the Sekonic light meter in the bottom left corner. If we tap that button, the modeling light is going to turn on on our flash units for the flash units that have modeling light capabilities. Now, if you're already a Godox user, then this is probably crossing your mind. You're thinking, great, I can go around and I can meter all of my lights and I can dial in the specific light output all without ever having to touch my trigger. But as soon as I come back to start taking photos and I hit the shutter button, 
that trigger is going to send out new power signal information to all of my lighting equipment. Well, you can get around that with the Godox X-Series triggers by simply using the app mode. Now the app mode, which can be found in the custom functions of any of the Godox X-Series triggers, was originally designed to work alongside the mobile app to give the mobile app control of all the power outputs of your lighting equipment. So this means if you put your Godox X-Series trigger into its app mode, then whatever power settings you put on your Sekonic light meter will be the settings that your lights remain at until you either change them on the Sekonic light meter or take your trigger out of app mode. Now, if you're already an L858DU light meter owner, then you know there are other awesome modes on here for calculating specs of your flash. And with the Godox module, we now have a wireless control option for each of them. So the first would be the cumulative lighting mode. So if I, in the top left corner, hit the button to change the mode, we also have a wireless cumulative or multiple mode. Now this is a setting for firing the strobe multiple times to get the output of the cumulative flash total. There's also now a wireless mode for calculating the flash duration. So if we go in the top left corner again to change our mode and we select the FDA mode with the wireless symbol next to it, all of our settings still carry over. We're still in channel five, we're still in group A, and now we can test the flash duration of this light. Now, if we hit that wrench icon again, we can also go to the second page and change the flash duration analysis value. So we can easily change to a T.5 flash duration, but I think T.1 flash durations are the most useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine up to stay in T.1 flash durations. And finally, what I think Sekonic worked the hardest on here was delivering accurate measurements in high-speed sync, which I'm not going to get into breaking down all the technical aspects of high speed sync and why it is a pain, but it's actually quite difficult to do just due to the multiple flashes of light happening in such a short period of time. So to get to that mode, we will go in the top left corner again, and you can see we have the HSS mode, and then we have the HSS mode with the wireless symbol next to it. We're gonna click that one. Now the great thing here is previously when metering for high speed sync, you needed the camera to send out a high-speed sync signal to the light. And Sekonic has been able to mimic that directly from the trigger. So not only is it sending out the fire signal, but we're also getting the signal that is necessary for the Godox lighting to recognize that it needs to fire in high-speed sync, even though we're not touching the camera at all. So this makes it really convenient. And you know what? I've never actually seen how much light the 8300 Pro loses in high-speed sync. So here's a good opportunity to test that. I'm gonna jump back into our wireless flash mode, still on channel five, group A. We're gonna go in here and we are going to raise the power all the way to full power. Then we will go back, we're gonna meter. We should still get F32.1. All right, so F32 is our regular sync power output at this distance. So now we're going to switch modes over to the high speed sync mode. Now we can still tweak any output settings that we need to from the high speed sync metering menu, but we don't need to do that here. We just need our full power again. So we're going to leave that. And I'm going to increase my shutter speed to one 500th of a second, which would be an appropriate shutter speed for high speed sync, anything over one 250th of a second on most cameras. It's going to start triggering high speed sync. Now we have an F11 and 7 tenths of a stop. Another cool thing is that after I get that meter reading, I can change my shutter speed to kind of see what effect that's going to have on the flash output, even in high speed sync. So I can go back down to 1 2 50th of a second and see how much light output we theoretically lost. And I see at 1 2 50th of a second that we are in F16 and 7 tenths when firing in high speed sync, which means that the 8300 Pro loses one and four tenths of a stop of light when in high speed sync compared to standard sync. Okay guys, I hope this video caught you up to speed on using the Sekonic L858 DU light meter along with Godox X series lighting. It's awesome that Sekonic managed to get all this tech in here, all this compatibility with the Godox X series products, such as the high speed sync, the flash durations, and the power level control 
all right from the meter because for anyone who is serious about using a light meter, this is just going to make their life way easier. Hope this video helped. I'll see you guys later.